we want to survive, we need the ocean. You can save the ocean because you love the ocean, but you can also save the ocean because you love humans. I'm Shailene Woodley. I'm an actor and I'm an advocate for our oceans. I had a very, I would say, normal suburban childhood. I was always very curious. I was very energetic. A majority of my childhood was spent in the woods, near the ocean, because I grew up in Los Angeles, so we were lucky. We did have access to camping near the sea. It really shaped who I was as a young person. I think those were the most influential and impactful experiences. And at that young age, it really made me realize how small and insignificant I truly am. And we all, we all are. And that there's a force that's so much bigger than any of us. You see all of these baby little pieces of plastic. The big kid. The dead coral. I forgot to brush their teeth, and so I decided to kill a whale. When I was 18, I moved to Hawaii. Being out there really opened my eyes to the responsibility that we have. It's so crazy, because this reef is half dead. But it makes sense, because we're not that far from shore. At the end of last year, I felt like I was like, okay, 2019 is going to be the year of oceans for me. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how it's going to happen, but the sea was something I wanted to learn more about. As sustainable as I try to be, I still clearly have so much plastic in my life. Plastic razor, plastic face wash, plastic face cream, plastic body wash. Can someone please come up with some alternatives. Actually, my deodorant. The only thing in this bag, out of all the products I use on my body, my deodorant is the only thing that's actually sustainable because it's made with cardboard. So when Greenpeace reached out to me and asked me to be a part of this experience, I was selfishly so excited because it, it meant that I get to spend a week in the middle of the ocean with scientists, with campaigners, with technology that is able to detect certain microplastics, um, DNA traces from particular animals, things that I would never have access to and to be quite frank, would probably not know how to find on the internet. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh my god. Shut the oh f***ing door. <laughs> my god. I honestly think I'm just excited to learn. One of the beautiful gifts I've been given in my life is a platform and I don't think I need to be on that platform telling people what to do, but I'd like to think that I could, or hope that I can be a bridge between a base of information, knowledge, and wisdom, and a population of people who want access to that knowledge and wisdom but don't necessarily know how. We just put this huge trough in the water, um, and basically what's going to happen is over the next 30 minutes, as the water passes through all of these different filters, it's going to collect microplastic in this guy on the very end. If you look at the ocean, and we're thinking plastic in terms of big objects, and one of the biggest threats is microplastics, which most of us very rarely have access to. I mean, look at how small some of these guys are. We're going up in numbers of plastic yeah. with every trawl that we do. Yeah, it seems like that. I mean, we've even got these huge chunks of plastic that were in this trawl, so we're seeing new stuff in every trawl. Wow. Was this something that was collected in the trawl? Yeah. so much being out on the Sargasso. 
we found a piece of microplastic once every three seconds. And this is just skimming the surface of the water. So if you consider that we had about five miles of depth below us, it challenged me to look at things in a new way. What are the questions I'm not asking? What are the solutions I'm not seeking? I love the ocean because I just love. <laughs> I've never found a better healer in my life. I've never found a better therapist in my life. I've never found something more forgiving and also something more unforgiving. You don't have to be on a Greenpeace boat to make a huge difference for this planet. The power really does lie in our own hands and it lies in holding our corporations and our governments accountable um, to the change that we want to make within our communities. My greatest hope for the future is that we learn to listen. We listen to the ocean, which will make us care about her. We listen to each other, which will make us care about each other. Yeah, I guess my, my greatest hope for the future is that we just get out of our own damn way. What's yours? <laughs>